then that he ain't seen nothing yet. And looking at this crowd today, I think we have another message for Mr. Grayling. Can I invite Chris Grayling onto the stage, please? Ooh. Hi guys, welcome again. We're outside the uh, House of the Parliament, uh, House of uh, Scum and Skullduggery. Anyway. And, uh, In May, I asked you what you thought of Chris Grayling, and there was not a positive response. But since then, he has, apparently, consulted widely, liaised with the profession, listened, and made concessions. Maybe you agree. So I'll ask you again. What do you think of Chris Grayling now? <laughs> In May, I jokingly put Grayling on trial for attempted murder of legal aid. You convicted him. Seeking to produce that bad character evidence, I wonder whether we should now be considering the charge of conspiracy to destroy the justice system. And I have some witnesses, our speakers today, to give evidence to that cause. We have some wonderful speakers. We're going to be hearing from Alison Webster QC, a speaker from War. We have Sir Anthony Hooper QC, Janice Sharp, Bill Waddington, Paddy Hill, Shami Chakrabarty, Dave Roundtree, Nigel Lithman QC. We have Ian Lawrence. We have Ivan Lawrence and we have Sadiq Khan, amongst others. Because we have so many good speakers, I'm afraid, with the exception of the first and last, I'm going to ask all of our speakers to speak for no more than three minutes. And if those speakers go for more than three minutes, then I'm afraid you're going to have to politely clap them. It's a test to see whether we can actually get our arguments into a succinct form. My name is Greg Foxsmith, and I am a committee member of the LCCSA, the London Criminal Courts Solicitors Association. It's my pleasure to compare this event Welcome to the Legal Aid Twitter revolution. Our hashtag today is hashtag just for justice. That's hashtag just numeral for justice. And I am at Greg Foxsmith of at LCCSA. And our first speaker, our warm-up act, is also from at LCCSA. In fact, it's a former president of the association, known on Twitter as at crim hyphen song hyphen ph. You will know him better as Paul Harris, Managing partner at Edward Fail Bradshaw Waterson. Do we have anyone here from Edward Fail today? <laughs> so Paul is a, a, an exemplary lawyer. He's been a stalwart of the LCCSA, and he's a closet Plymouth Argyle fan. Paul. <laughs> I want to thank Mr. Grayling for bringing us all together today. This is the biggest gathering that I can remember of solicitors, people from solicitors' firms, barristers, the probation service, and the many people who we represent and assist. We are here today to defend the individual's unfettered right to equal access to justice. This is not about cuts. This is about the rights of ordinary people. Legal aid was introduced so that all people, regardless of wealth, would have equal access to courts and justice. We are united today, not just in fighting the cuts, but the political ethos that underpins them. This is about a reduction of state accountability. It's not about the fact that solicitors and barristers are having their fees reduced again. It's about the state substantially increasing its power over the individual, whilst at the same time removing the safety net for the most vulnerable, for the person inadvertently in the wrong place at the wrong time. We need to be worried. The evidence that our justice system is in meltdown is clear for all of us to see. The LASBO Act has already had a devastating effect on access to justice. The family courts are grinding to a halt 
because cases are being conducted in the main by litigants in person. Up and down the country, people are trying to resolve serious family issues unrepresented in court, often faced by their former partner who may have been abusive or violent to them. Children in custody are no longer entitled to any legal representation when trying to obtain housing upon release. Some might say, why should they get any help? But the reality is that these young people, many of whom have been in care for most of their lives, have little chance of emerging from a life of poverty and criminality unless they are given the chance of stability and a proper home. The restrictions now being proposed for bringing judicial review will restrict the ability of the individual to challenge unlawful state action. This is what has happened so far and this is why we have to take action. The proposals for criminal legal aid are equally as devastating. Fees are at their irreducible minimum. Fees are to be cut for solicitors by a minimum of 17.5%. In fact, for many Crown Court cases, our analysis is that the cut is over 25%. Far worse than the government are admitting. These cuts will affect quality and a proper and fair justice system. If you introduce a cut price, those who are committed to a robust, rigorous, fearless defence will go bust, as the many hours they spend doing the job properly will go unpaid. The vocational model of criminal defence will be a relic of a bygone age. This system cannot absorb any more cuts. Justice on the cheap is not justice. <laughs> it is the individual who will suffer. Firms will only be able to survive by slashing costs. There will be no room for the experienced lawyer in the marketplace. They will be replaced by inexperienced, not properly qualified representatives, often tasked with representing and protecting the rights of the most vulnerable. Recently, I was contacted by someone who the police had asked to attend an interview voluntarily in relation to allegations of using a stolen credit card. The officer told me that they had clear evidence that this person had used the card, of course, they always do, but if he showed remorse, he would be eligible for a caution. The police weren't really that interested in what happened, they just wanted to tick a box. The effect of the caution would mean that the client would be unable to continue to train his child's local sports team as he needs to be CRB checked he would not be able to visit his family in America without getting a different visa. In fact, he was innocent. He went to the police station, he answered questions, representations were made, no further action, no caution, nothing. Proper representation on legal aid at the police station had had an important effect on this man's life. Let's be frank. Mr. Grayling's Ministry of Justice is quite simply not fit for purpose. If an interpreter turns up at court on time and can actually translate to an acceptable court standard, this is the exception rather than the rule. Successive scandals concerning G4S and Serco demonstrate quite clearly a high level of incompetence and an inability to deliver the essential requirements of an effective criminal justice system. The proposed Crown Court advocacy fees 
I've just been assaulted by Mr. Grayling. <laughs> Not for the first time. Uh, the proposed Crown Court advocacy fees are unworkable. These proposals are fatal to a properly functioning justice system which has been experiencing a steady decline in quality as cuts already imposed take hold. We are moving towards a two-tier system, not own client and duty client, but those with money and those without. You pay more, you get more justice. We have tried very hard to engage with Mr Grayling. A National Justice Committee has been set up containing the leadership of the solicitor representative organisations, the bar, and all of those, including the Justice Alliance, who represent lawyers and those who are affected by these changes. We have asked Mr Grayling to engage with us as one body, to engage with the people who carry out the work at the coalface. We have offered to find him savings and greater efficiencies. He has refused to engage with this committee, preferring instead to meet separately with solicitors and barristers trying to divide and rule. We have provided him with economic evidence that the vast majority of the cuts that he seeks will occur automatically because of declining trends and volumes. He has stated himself that these reforms need to be evidence-based, yet he has ignored the conclusions of the Otterburn Report jointly commissioned by the Law Society and the Ministry of Justice which states that the supplier base has an average profit margin of 5%, so less than the first cut of 8.75%. Otterburn states that the finances of most firms are fragile, and most firms would not survive without duty contracts. The government have already penny-pinched on flood defence. Consequently, people lost their homes, and our hearts go out to all of these people. Crazy decisions in the name of austerity Sorry. ultimately have created far greater costs and more importantly caused hardship for ordinary people. Although not entirely analogous, we stand here today looking at a raft of cuts which are economically unviable and which will undermine and destroy a strong and robust justice system. These cuts are necessary, they are not economical, and the evidence suggests that the system is already at collapse. Yet Mr. Grayling goes on because he does not care. So I say to him, on behalf of everyone here, that we are still willing to talk, we are still willing to engage, but we will not stand by and watch you destroy this justice system before moving on to another department in government to read Hannah. Thank you.